Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Chris Osborne. I'm with First Indiana Robotics. I'm the program director. Uh, today we have uh, Will Hall, uh, an alum of Team 14400 FTC uh, out of Hobart, Indiana, the Space Cadets, and current student uh, and senior Jerry Fuller uh, from 14400 Space Cadets in Hobart. Uh, and really what we're talking about today is the Innovate Within competition. Uh, these two have taken part in that. We're going to get into that here in a minute. Uh, and uh, their experiences in the program, how it's impacted their, uh, their FTC team, uh, their other areas of their lives, uh, and I also get at some advice for our FTC and FRC teams that are out there considering taking part this year uh, in the Innovate Within competition. So with that, uh, we'll just open up. Jerry, why don't you tell us a little bit about your experiences with Innovate Within, and then Will, maybe you could follow up with uh, some of your own thoughts. So as of this year, I will have three years experience with Innovate Within. Uh, two years ago, I was on a team, or I worked with a team kind of after I went through the competition, but I helped them in their development stage after the competition. Their team was Rearview, and what uh, we worked on was it was an early warning system for cyclists to let them know if a car or a vehicle was approaching from behind. And that's where I started, really got into the program because that kind of showed me the steps that need to be taken uh, in order to have an effective pitch and really what different elements you need in order to uh, go in and be successful in the competition. And then after that, um, Will got with me right around the same time that year, wasn't it, Will? Uh, yeah, it's pretty close. Because uh, at our high school, uh, our senior, uh, design class that's the actual the whole class is built around the innovate within so the whole curriculum is you uh, beginning there you come up with a problem you spend three months researching three months prototyping and three months pitching uh, all to go in through innovate within so we'll kind of give the story here of how uh, our team came together yeah so obviously like you were told my name's will hall um, i am an alum of 14 400 uh, with the Innovate competition, when me and Jerry came together, it was just a little idea. And I was like, hey, wouldn't this be cool? Wouldn't it be cool if you could think I won't have to worry about head injuries anymore? Because we had worked on a new football helmet design. And Jerry's like, you know what? You might actually have a very good idea. <laughs> and Jerry jokingly said, you know, hey, you might not be so dumb after all. But um. <laughs> but just working with Innovate Within, and it, it was an amazing opportunity. Um, and it was just a lot of fun. And I'm now in college, and it's given me many opportunities through college. Um, I'm going to Michigan State, and it's given me a lot of opportunities. And that's a little bit about it. Great. Uh, so, uh, Jerry, um, do you want to talk a little bit about... Um some maybe some tips uh for those who are considering you know this year we have quite a few teams working on the innovation project within first if they're if they're filling out that form for innovate within there might be some things that they might want to keep in mind that are a little bit different about the innovate within uh what are some tips just from your own experience that you have for those teams so the innovate within isn't really fully built around the actual thing you design or make it's actually more of a business competition of how well you can pitch this in a business setting to like a set of investors because really that's what you're actually doing is you're pitching this to a set of judges who are then deciding which team uh, needs the needs funding the most in order to help fund their idea and make it a real product or thing so uh, one of the biggest tips i say is don't rush it because it's something that you, you want to be thorough and you want to know everything about it. Similar to how like judges interviews with robots. You don't want to go in there and not know how you built your robot. You want to know absolutely every aspect there is into what you're pitching and what you designed. And then uh, another good tip, or actually another good thing to know is you're going to need, so unlike the innovation challenge where I'm pretty sure you just submit a form with all your details on it is, the first innovate within works in three rounds. So the first round, you have to submit a two to three minute video detailing all the different details about your uh, project you're working on. So everything from how much it's going to cost to how you came up with it and like what problem it actually solves. 
So that's a big thing is that you need to be able to effectively edit a well video that's two to three minutes that really puts a lot of detail forth into what you're actually working on. Yeah, I would say for tips with Innovate Within and, you know, for those doing the innovation challenge, um, if you're thinking about it, do it. You know, there there isn't an idea that's wrong. Um, Jerry can attest, I came up with a frozen cheese spike that would go into Hot Pockets. And that would be an idea. You can, you can make the most minute, um, as seen on TV kind of thing. But as Jerry said, as long as you present it well, and you use your presenting skills that you've gotten through first and all the competitions, you'll do just fine. So that, that would be my biggest takeaway. No idea is a bad idea as long as you can prove that there's a need for it. And here's another thing. Is if you're having a hard time coming up with an idea, uh, we do this in class for teams that struggle to figure out an idea, is write down 40 things on a page that you don't like and then figure out how you can fit them together to make a product that solves these dislikes you have. Because a lot of times, if you don't like something, a lot of other people don't as well. So go through and you can figure out things that are easy to solve and fix. And that's a good way to come up with an idea. And uh, that actually uh, makes me think of a good point is that I believe with the innovation challenge, you're actually given a theme you have to uh, do your project around. Do, do the same thing, look at sports and because I think this year it's ha uh, something I haven't looked at too much, but it's I believe it's uh, make a product to help improve uh, physical and mental health. So look at things and talk to other people and see what they don't like or what they might need help on and then figure out what needs to be done. Because it might seem like a kind of complex process, but once you get going, it's not that hard to do. That's really good advice. So um, reach out to those that are living in those worlds, uh, coaches, athletes, et cetera, and ask them to maybe help you by generating some things. What do you, what's missing from making you better? What's, what do you don't like about training? What do you not like about competition? What makes it more complicated or difficult? You know, how could you make things more simplified or yeah, no, that's, that's fantastic advice. Um, the, uh, so what have you found, and you guys have hinted at it a little bit, um, but what have you found to be uh, the really key elements to a good pitch? Work together. Know your partner, oh. know your product will, and will, uh, or will, 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 tell them uh, what we got on our final, from our state competition, tell them what are the, the note we got back on our feedback. So, um... Like Jerry saying, the feedback, when, when you do your pitches, so let's say you make it past um, your regional and you're in, you're going against people in your region and you're pitching possibly online because of COVID. Um, you, after your pitch, even if you don't make it past, you will get a little section that will give you, all right, these are your key takeaways. This is what you need to improve on, all this and that. So the first one, I think me and Jerry got calm down, relax. Because I speak, and you, you almost talk, just talk to me yeah. in like a competition setting. Is I'll just start talking really fast like this and to where like no one can understand what I'm saying and you, you see how that goes now. So that's kind of how that whole video and first pitch was. Yes. And then um, for the state, I believe our feedback was just great job. It was an, um, it was an amazing synergy between me and Jerry. Like the best yeah. duo of everyone. So like th yeah. that's the most important thing is you need to have a partner who you, you work well with, you're a good dynamic. Because Will, he was the whole reason because uh, we made our product because we were designing better uh, new padding for football helmets because Will had a concussion and it's affected him until now. So Will was kind of the whole reason and like inspiration behind the whole thing. They came to me because I knew how to design and make it. So you need a good dynamic of people who not only have a kind of a story or kind of inspiration behind it, but you also need people who can know how to make the product and can help develop it. 
and then probably also answer the technical questions behind yes. the yeah. product design. But as to your point too, it's it's uh, it's a good idea for even the the non technical uh, people to probably also get a good grounding in in the yeah. technical side, so they can yeah, so they can actually understand what it is and why they why they're yeah. doing it. Oh no, yes. You want everyone on your team to be able to answer any question it is about your product. That's a big thing because like with the robots, what I find is when we, we work, like every team member has their own thing to do. So when it comes to question time, we all answer our own sets of questions. With Innovate, a judge, judges won't, don't, won't always just say, okay, here's a question. They'll, be like, they'll point to you and they'll be, okay, why is this like this? So they're making sure that everyone knows absolutely everything about your product. Okay. Um, I, the one question uh, that, you know, I prepped you guys a little bit ahead of time, but um, something I was interested in that uh, didn't come up in this is as you were all going through this, how much time did you spend looking into like trademark and uh, le like patent? Is that from innovate within, is that as much of a concern um, or is it, is it that your product isn't necessarily something that you're really going to try to take to market? It's more of the just selling an idea. Or did you also have to come prepared with knowing this is where we may have to buy a license to this? We may have to, you know, we are concerned about trademark infringement here or. So it's something that you, it, it, it would definitely will help you if you do have it because it's, it shows it's more credibility to you. It shows you're going, you're willing to go the extra step to get these extra things done. Yeah, so like what Jerry's trying to get across is that within the competition, if you account for it, if you know you're either in the middle of the filing process or you have filed it, if you feel strongly enough about it, um, then you will be better off. You will be looked at a little bit differently. Um, you'll have a better chance of doing well along with that within the competition there is a financial bit yeah that you need to list you know how much it's going to cost for potential workers how much it's going to cost for a warehouse uh a headquarters an office um, how much re-upping it every so often is and what your revenue you're projected to bring in is and all of that goes in to the financial section and Jerry absolutely did not like it. And I loved it. You, you all got to work with um, people at the Small Business Development Council as part of the process. Yes. And, so, well, and talk a little bit about that experience. So once you make it past round one, uh, so pretty much after you, once you get past the first round, so you're going to the regional competition, which for us was pitching at a, or at a local college. Uh, we had to, uh, we were given contacts and access to software to help us deal with this financial stuff. So it was a whole, uh, we didn't really talk to many people. We more so used the software and the resources they gave us because it was amazing because it pretty much was like, it was like a setup wizard for all of your, so like, you know how you set up a robot for the first time, it, you have like steps that guide you through. That's pretty much what the software they gave us was. It was okay, import what your expected cost of your uh, materials are gonna be for your product and then like other running costs. And it did all the financial stuff for you, but then you were able to go back and tweak it and really set up how you want and make it all as precise as could be. Do you, uh, do you see how that experience um, could be, be beneficial to really any first teams, whether they're FLL, FTC, FRC, from just a, um, a team sustainability standpoint, not just, competing and innovate within or innovation project, but going through that to view their team as a problem that needs a solution for sustainability. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when I, th cause like with the teams, you also, you have uh, financials, you have to deal with, the, with your team as well. If you want to be sustainable, you can't just go blow all your money on robot parts as much as we want to. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you, you have to keep some, you have to keep extra because you have to register for, you have to have enough for registration. You have to have enough for uh, like to buy your game elements each year. And it's something you need to keep track of because if you want a team that's going to last a long time, you need to, be able to spend your money effectively along with just uh, keeping track and like, um, what's the word I'm thinking of? 
you, you need to also constantly be bringing in new members, keep people um, engaged in what you're doing, just have a good and fun time, because that's what it comes down to. Uh, in, in the end, you, just, you if everything goes wrong, at least you had fun doing it. And that's what it's really all about. Great. Will, did you have some thoughts on that one too, or? Uh, it was it was quite basically what Jerry was saying. You know, it it strides very horizontally. They work very hand in hand. With if you're figuring out, all right, we can do we can do this event, or we can work with this elementary school and get the younger kids involved earlier, so they can be get into FLL, and then eventually get into FTC, and then if they're lucky enough, get an FRC, you know, and that just, that just allows them to a be more in depth and allow themselves to enjoy a great, great organization. And it just ends up being a great time. Like Jerry was saying, even if you fail, even if the robot breaks and it just doesn't like you at a certain day, you're still having a great time with your friends. That, yeah, well, that's what yeah. I would think would be the biggest takeaway. Yeah, my guess is that you all probably have learned more from failing than success. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, very much. <laughs> um, shoot, we specifically with Innovate Within, we went through two or three variations of helmets before we decided, all right, helmet is not a good idea. <laughs> yeah, because originally, our original concept was we were making a whole entire new helmet from scratch. And once we started that, we figured out really how hard it was and how <laughs> if you do something wrong, you're going to hurt yourself. We figured that out the hard way. Because <laughs> sure. like a good example is our first helmet was made out of carbon fiber. Well, carbon fiber splinters and will cut you. We figured that out the hard way. But then like, so after that, we're like, okay, how can we reduce this down? Because we're really, the only thing you're changing in a helmet, if you're making it from scratch, is the padding that's on the inside. So that's how we got to that point was we're like, okay, let's, a whole helmet's kind of big aspect for us to try to hit right now. Let's just work on the padding. So that's what we're working on. That's what we're still working on is, uh, Will, Michigan State, you have a whole lab there, right? That uh, they have yes. to work on and uh, develop uh, this further, correct? Yeah, so at Michigan State, a cool thing that they have is called the Hatch Center, and it's basically a massive building that's just for entrepreneurship for the students. So if a student has an idea that, you know, they want to package and maybe design and all that, they have a place to go. While I was trying to decide where I wanted to go for school, um, it was mentioned to me that, hey, the Hatch Center is very viable and you would be allowed to use it. You know, and that that was another driving point that uh, made me want to go to Michigan State. That way I can still work on the helmets and everything and still have a great time. But going going back to first, I would say you're definitely going to learn more from failing. Um, you're going to see, all right, this idea maybe wasn't the greatest or this aspect wasn't the greatest. Let's go with something that means a little bit more than you know a minute part as for the shell of the helmet instead of the inside of the helmet like jerry was saying the inside is more important that's great um could you guys talk a little bit um about and we've we've hinted at some of this and i, I think we've talked a little bit about it but but maybe some specifics how has participating in the innovate within had an impact on you maybe in some other areas of your life have you felt like doing this now for the last couple of years or will in your case the last year or so have you seen where there's been other things that have gone on in your life or other opportunities where you're like oh i'm not as intimidated by this now because i did innovate within or i feel more equipped to do this because i did innovate within so jerry do you want to Sure. Um, so like my big thing is talking in front of people. I absolutely hate it. And here we are at the regional competition with a hundred people in the audience in front of us and we gotta we gotta go through and pitch our thing. And it's something you just gotta work through, but it's something that doesn't bother me as much now because it's something that I've done 
and it's not that bad anymore. S similar thing with when we did our state page. Sure, it may have been online. And, uh, so like I was in my basement with a green screen and all that setup, but there was still probably a thousand people watching that online pitch. So it's really a big thing it was, for me is the public speaking uh, part of it. And the actual having to talk in front of people because that's not what I normally like to do. Yeah, so it um, Innovate Within has helped me quite a lot, you know, even though I've been doing it a lot less than Jerry. Uh, Jerry's still in high school, though. Um, with Innovate Within, it's it's helped me with school and paying for school. It's gotten us on a podcast. It's gotten us in touch with an NFL team, potentially. You know, it's gotten me now. It's possibly going to be two internships, all because of what stemmed from me talking to him in the cafeteria at the high school about an idea that I was excited about and we brought it to life. And it's, I would say that the sky's the limit. You know, if you have an idea that, you know, you think is a very good idea and is passionate, you can take it wherever you want. And it's the same with FTC, FRC and FLL. If you do very well and you enjoy it and you're like, Hey, I did this and it's awesome and it's great and it's amazing and you just you do well and you perform well that will give you opportunities later on um i know that there was a group of gentlemen that we had met with when uh pre-covid that two of the three of them were in ftc and frc and they um they go all around the united states and i think overseas as well and they clean out um the tankers at the mills and it's this giant uh, robot and it just scoops up the muck. So like it's the limit is the sky. Like I was saying, you, you can do whatever you want as long as you are passionate about it. it it'll grow your network to a lot of more people uh, than you, you would ever expect people to talk to. Cause like over the summer, after, within uh, because of the virus, there was things we couldn't do because normally what they do is they do a week long trip uh, off to um, what's it called uh, to a major city in the U.S. Yeah. Meet a bunch of entrepreneurs and all that from there. Well, since we couldn't do that this year, instead they brought our going in on weekly Zoom call and met with different people from across the country, and that was a good experience overall because you got to you, we got to talk to a lot of many different people. And so, like, well, give, give a few examples, Will, who all we talked to and, like. So, um, we had talked to Sint Marshall, who was the first African-American woman to ever become, I believe, a CEO of an NFL, uh, a, um, NBA team. Uh, she is actually CEO um, of the Dallas Mavericks. Um, we had met with her. We met with countless people that are just amazing you know it's it's hard to even list them because they're all there's just so many people that we had met and through the innovate competition like jerry was saying your network will become from maybe in a little bit to a lot <laughs> you just you meet so many people so many great people that are willing to help you and even with this year since it was online and everything was live streamed there was countless people in the Facebook chat that were just saying, you know, we want to help with this. And we had actually connected with one of them. Um, it, the network becomes a massive deal when you get further on. Well, that's fantastic. And these are all things too that um, it, it, very similar to first, when, you know, you, when you're at events and you're meeting people from other teams and other mentors and judges. And you're right. I mean, you, you really, uh, I try to encourage um, everyone, students, mentors alike, when you're at a competition, try to meet as many people as you can. You, you never know when you're going to meet that person who might have access to that dream job or to that opportunity, or you might meet uh, a a person with some common shared values that you could all of a sudden become very good friends with that now lives on the other side of the state, but who knows, you end up going to the same university or you end up working at the same company or uh, 
based on your all's experience, it sounds like maybe you all partner up and start your own business someday. Yeah. yeah. And then I'll add one, uh, another thing is really between first in, and innovate, you'll, like you just said, you'll meet people from all over. And sometimes you actually run into them like, like public and you're like, I, I know you from uh, FTC or something. That's kind of a funny thing. And that reminds me of uh, me and Will are on an, uh, we were at uh, high school, our high school has an electric karting team and we were down in uh, Indy. And so pretty much our races are held at the, uh, at Indianapolis Motor Speedway during the Indy car time trials. And uh, we were down there getting lunch one day and they, uh, we ran into someone with a person in Indiana hello, and I'm like, and th they called me out and I'm like, wait a second. And th th they knew me and I did not expect it because it was, was that you? It was me. Uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I it, it, because we that pairs up with what's called the M STEM event. And uh, we're, we're a proud, participant in that event and we have a, a booth set up and yeah no and that that cart race and that whole day that is a, a really fantastic uh, event um something that i'm very much looking forward to it you know coming back in person someday and uh getting back down there um it's a it's always a fantastic day uh I, as we wrap up um maybe just some final thoughts about uh, again just the um, encouraging our FRC FTC teams to uh, take a risk and and jump into this innovate within um, and and you know I, I guess that's the big thing is is any final thoughts on that and any final maybe we, anything you can think of that we didn't talk about that people should keep in mind when they do this um, uh, I do have one thing uh, and that is so this year uh, the competition's taken a whole it's gone up to another level in terms of really scholarships and all that that are offered. So this is a new thing this year. And that is a bunch of uh, a lot of different uh, universities from across the state are actually competing with each other to uh, get students from this program into their school. So a lot of schools this year uh, are giving scholarships just for even participating in the program in general. So like I knew IUPUI is giving $1,000 per year just for competing in the competition alone. And then all the other, a bunch of other schools across the state of Indiana are also doing that. And so that's another big thing is. Uh, and we should also at this moment put in a plug that those in many cases could stack with the first scholarship opportunities. IUPUI, we have, we have seven uh, higher ed institutions in the state of Indiana that have scholarships for first participants, uh, University of Evansville, Hanover, IU, IUPUI, Trine, um, and uh, Valparaiso University, Rose Holman. Uh, and if you look at the scholarships that the schools you're talking about for uh, Innovate Within, some of those would stack on each other. So doing first and do Innovate Within, and now you're going to get even more money for school. So very good point. I'm glad you brought that up. Anything else, Will? Uh, so just in final thoughts, like I had mentioned earlier, if, if you have an idea, even if it's something like I said, a frozen cheese spike that would go into Hot Pockets, go with it. Just run with it because no idea is a bad idea as long as you're passionate about it and you can see a spot in the market for the competition wise, that it can work. If you can do all three of those things, you will do just fine in the competition and you will be able to get some of these scholarships. You'll have a great network and you'll just have great opportunities that come with you all the way until you're probably a senior in college and looking for that final job. Okay, well, um, I'm wondering as we wrap up here, um, I want to thank you both for taking the time today uh, to share your experiences and your thoughts on this. This has been really fantastic. We're going to be sharing this with uh, our FTC FRC community uh, to encourage them uh, not only to, to consider taking part in the Innovate Within, but also uh, we may have some teams that are still on the fence on participating in the innovation project. Uh, and I think um, doing both is a great idea. Uh, I know 
we have teams that uh, they're trying to balance resources and time and everything. You can't do everything, but, um, but if they do, uh, um, I think this is just, uh, it just sounds like a great opportunity for a lot of skills development that enhances these other skills you learn at first. So thank you so much.